We're going to calculate the minimum sample size for a confidence interval given the margin of error ahead of time. So we know the margin of error and we need to decide how big of a sample do we need to get our confidence interval within that. There's a couple formulas that we're going to use and we're going to see those uh, down on the bottom here. So this is going to be the one that we deal with for proportions and this is the one that we deal with for means. Now if you wonder where these came from or why they're so crazy, let's just walk through real quick. If we look at the proportion part, let's look at the margin of error in the confidence interval equation up here. So this equation up top is for confidence interval, and this part is the margin of error. It's the plus minus part in the confidence interval. Same thing over here, the plus minus part in the confidence interval of the means, a little less scary. Um, we're a little more familiar with some of these here. So this part is the margin of error, and I'm actually going to write equals me, just so we remember this is the margin of error. So equals the me in both cases. Now what we're going to do with that is say, what if uh, we decided that we are going to chop off the first part of the equation? So, okay, so we don't need the rest of the confidence interval part. We just want the margin of error in both cases. And now we want to solve these for n. We want to get n alone on one side of the equation. Not the square root of n, but just n. And if you do that over here, this is what it solves out to. And if you do that over here, this is what it solves out to. Let's look at the case of means, just because it's a little bit more straightforward. If you were to multiply both sides by the square root of n, you would have uh, margin of error times the square root of n um, on one side, z star times uh, standard deviation on the other, get that over there, divide both sides by the margin of error and it would end up on the bottom over here, dividing both sides by the margin of error would end up on the bottom, and then you square both sides and you end up with this equation right here. So we actually go into more depth with that with uh, one of the essay question videos. So if you want to see that um, fleshed out, we can do that there. But that's the basic idea where these come from. Now, if you're given a problem where you need to calculate minimum sample size, let's say they give you some of this information here. And we have all our formulas down below. First one is uh, they tell you x bar and s. So they tell you the mean and standard deviation. You'll notice from uh, these formulas here, that if we are dealing with a confidence interval of means that we do not need the one for proportions. You'll also notice that the one for means doesn't actually include the mean because the margin of error doesn't care about the middle. It only cares about the spread. So that information is actually extraneous. It's, it's unneeded here. So all we need to do this is figure out what is our standard deviation. We also need a z star which means we need to know our confidence level which we are told right here. And that corresponds to a z-star of 2.576. Uh, so that's just something you would look up. Now our formula, we're going to plug all our values in that formula there. Um, so our z-star, 2.576 we plugged in. We have our standard deviation of 9. We need to plug in our margin of error on the bottom. And we were told here in the problem that we want to have a maximum margin of error of only 2. So in order to achieve that, we plug in that margin of error of 2 right down there. And now if we were to calculate this out we would just type it all in and here I typed in the first part and now if I go to my square function I get 134.4 uh, something. And what you'll want to do is you always want to round it because a sample size is always going to be an integer. You can't take a fraction of a person in your sample, for example. Um, but the interesting thing, unlike some of the other uh, sample size calculations where we just rounded it off, we're calculating the minimum sample size. And if 134.4 is the minimum, you will need to round up. Even though 0.45 actually would round down to 134, you would round 134.4579 up to 135. So our minimum sample size, now written as an integer, as a whole number, is 135. So be careful with that.
Next example, we have 95% confidence, maximum margin error of 3%, and we have no prior estimate of the proportion. Well, we're dealing with a proportion here then. Um, so we're calculating uh, minimum sample size. So that's our basic starting equation that we have. And we need to plug in our values. Our confidence statement comes from, or our Z star comes from how confident we are. So if we are 95% confident, we have a Z star 1.9. Six. So we plug that in right here up on top. Uh, next part, we have our margin of error. We want to be within 3%. Now remember, all of these numbers um, when you're dealing with proportions are written as decimals. So that means that 3% is going to be written as 0 0.03. So let's just make sure that these are matching up in your mind. So 3% is 0 0.03. The last part says we have no prior estimate of the proportion, and this formula has these weird things uh, that are p star. That is not p hat, that is not p, the population proportion, that is not a p value. Yes, there's another symbol with p. I don't know who comes up with this, but p star is the best guess of the proportion going into this calculation. And it says we have no prior estimate. So when you don't know a proportion, you're not sure what the best guess is, you have to take the most conservative guess, and that's going to be 0.5. So we're going to plug in 0.5 for these P stars here because we are not sure um, of anything else. If we were told a that a prior study had been done and we think it's about 70%, we could use 0.7. Um, if we thought it was about 65%, 0.65, so forth. So we plug in 0.5 and then 1 minus 0.5, which also is 0.5. If you're curious about what this term does here, when you have 0.5 times 0.5, it comes out to 0.25 or 1 fourth. If you were to have a better guess, let's say 0.9, that would make the second term 0.1, 0.09, uh, or 9 one hundredths. This term gets smaller if you can make a guess that's better than 0.5, which means your sample size could be smaller. So essentially, if you have a better guess than 0.5, it'll allow you to have a smaller sample size. So in this case we don't, so let's just go ahead and plug this into our calculator. We have 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, and I always like to do that calculation right away, square it right away, and then do my multiplying by 0.5 and 0.5 again. So I get this 1067.1 repeating. Again, that's the minimum sample size, so the, the next lowest whole number is going to be 1,068. So our answer is 1,068. That is the minimum sample size we would need to get a margin of error of 3% at 95% confidence. And that's why if you look in the newspaper when they report 3% margin of error at 95% confidence, they almost always have a sample of approximately 1,000 people.